Hey everybody, this is Righteous Freed here with another installment in the Rush Tank Busting series, this time featuring Lanford, the Untarnished. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna jump right into this. Lanford is going to primarily be an infantry unit. That's where you get his best stats as a sword saint. His attack is gonna be higher at a nice 582. And this is going to be how to play him as an infantry in PvP. So, start things off. His talent, Untarnished. Increase all stats of all friendly units within two blocks, excluding HP by 15%. This is amazing. This, everything from attack down to skill is increased by that. Super, super powerful. It's basically just a bunch of command skills mixed together and I give it a little better. It does not stack with command, so, you know, if you have him, you don't need to bring a command skill like on Matthew with attack command or anything like that, because he provides that. Not the flashiest, not the best, but just solid 15% stats for everybody around you. Your tank is tankier, your healers heal better, any other DPS near him will deal more damage. So, on, so all around, it's a great talent, especially because it buffs himself up as well. Alright, now classes again, infantry is going to be better, you're going to be seeing a lot of lancer classes coming in the near future, It so he is going to have a ch chance to shine right now, being able to have increased crit chance, being able to just dominate over those lancers with the class advantage, he is going to just murder any lancer landius, albedos in general, and ledins. class stones or mastery stones it's going to be standard for him we're just going to go over this real quick before we get into the skills armor and headwear attack hp defense weapon and accessory attack skill and hp super standard for arena stones hp crit chance attack skill and i'm sorry crit damage attack skill and crit chance you just need to maximize the damage he deals and chance of getting a critical strike that's going to be the theme around him So his skills, there are two main ways to play him. You can go the 3-2-1 route with his 3C Fearless Strike, Chivalry, and then Mind's Eye, as I see that as his only real good one-cost skill. I mean, you could go for his other class to get Defense Break, but the crit chance on there is just too good. But... Let's go over his skills real quick. Javelin. Two range attack. It does not suffer from melee damage reduction. Attacks a single enemy dealing 0.8 damage. Now that looks weak, but for every block you move before you attack, the damage you deal will increase by 20% up to 60%. This gets up to a 1.35 times damage, I believe was the amount. Let's see. Just going to do some quick math. Okay. One second. Most of all, it gets up to a roar's worth of damage, and you can make it arranged. So, it's actually pretty decent because after you deal that damage, you're going to be able to retreat two spaces afterwards. So you can just poke somebody down, weaken them up, and then you can force them to draw out a heal from their healers. This, if you go the 2-2-2 route, then this will be able to set up for your tank buster to go in and then hit them afterwards. So you can get them out of position or you're going... Or you're going to leave it softened up. Because if they heal first and they might heal afterwards. That if you're going first. You're going to have a significant advantage over that. If you're going second. And he's the last character to move. That will force him to heal. First in the round. Doing 
doing that, you'll be able to just capitalize with your other tank buster you're going to bring with you to actually kill the tank or put them severely weakened if they have enough defense. They can't heal, they have to play super safe, or they have to just jump in and try to kill you. If they can't do that, you're going to be able to take the advantage and then win out over the day. So, Javelin may seem like a very weak skill, but the power it has to set up for the next round and then retreat into safety is unbelievable. It's what is one of the things that made makes him shine, just because you can also, if their DPS is out of position and they don't think that you can kill them, you it will, they will be surprised when you go Javelin, kill you with my Berserkers, and then they retreat. Next is going to be his 3 cost skill, which is very interesting. Command range. All mixed force friendly units within your talent's command range are immune to stat reductions. That can really help. If you're running a Lancer Landius with Royal Cavalry, you can have that Swordsmith Metal on him, and then, you know, somebody throws out a bunch of debuffs, they can't lower his stats. Same with... Same with Landford, it affects him. All your other units, if you have... You have Toguro with, in his demon class, with Bone Dinos or Gargoyles. You won't have to worry about his stats being reduced by anything. Can work for any, just any other unit. It's great to do that because it can make them waste a skill. Now, when you're attacking, you deal 1.6 times damage and your crit increases by 20% before battle. And then, I'm sorry, your crit increases by 20% when attacking. And then before battle, you also dispel two buffs. So it's got that slight roar aspect in there. So this, you know, you're attacking a juggler with only the Triton buff up at the moment. Boom. He's now defenseless. If he's not in water, those lobster behemoths are going to die. When you kill a target, the, school kill, the skill's cooldown goes down by four turns. So it goes down to a one-turn cooldown, just like how Lightning Flash works if you kill anything. If you don't eliminate it, but you get a crit, then you get three turns. So... It's a little extra help right there. Now, you're most likely just going to be eliminating people with the amount of buffs you're going to have, so you don't have to worry about the second part. But all in all, the skill is pretty powerful. Getting that extra crit chance can make sure you just put that tank into the ground. Okay, one cost skill blast. You're not going to use this because you're going to be using chivalry 99% of the time. You don't need this for him. With the amount of buffs you're going to have, you'll have to worry about taking dying from a counterattack. Endure is bad. I'm not going to go over it. Don't ever use it. Roar. There are very, very few instances to use Roar with the other skills that Lanford has. While it does decrease their attack in Int, if you're attacking another Squishy, you're going to be killing them because you're just going to be critting them. Your other skills are going to let you one-shot them before they can ever reach your hero. There's not too many options in PvP where you're going to want to use Roar on this specific character. But if you don't feel like Javelin is the way to go, if they have too many ranged units and you don't want to do that, that might be a, something that you can do instead in a very specific situation. He is also a faction buffer for the Strategic Masters. Ace Tactics gives the standard faction buffs, and then if... When, so now, if you're mixed units, anybody who is a mixed unit when this is cast on them, for example, like Leon has angels, he, he will then deal 15% increased damage. This has some uses, but with the majority of time, he is not going to be your faction buffer. Because you want to get him into position with chivalry. Even if you have someone like Akka or Imelda, most times you're going to want to have chivalry that way you get that extra 3 movement. If you have to slow push, then this might be an option as well. If they ban out your mobility units and you don't want to be able, you don't want to rush in because you can see that they're waiting for you to do that. In very rare instances, you can use this instead to just keep that buff up and then be able to strike when the time is right and just wait it out. Chivalry, we all know this from Leon. Active skill, increased unit attack by 30%. You get blast and reinforcement. 
Blast reduces damage by 30% when you're attacking your HP is above 80%. Reinforcement, after taking action, you restore 20% of your unit's HP. Super powerful, and then when you cast Chivalry, you then can move another 3 blocks and attack. Super powerful, super good, everything you need. When you're running him, you're going to be having, hopefully, at least 6 movement, because you have a movement buff. This will give you to 9 movement. It's going <laughs> to make him someone to fear. That map control and the ability to just crit and put someone into the ground, you're never, you're never going to be sad with him. Mind's Eye, the best passive for him. The best. It crit increases by 15%. That alone is what is going to make him a tank buster. Because being able to get that extra crit damage in with something like Attack Blessing, Lajardin the Iris on him, you're just gonna. You're gonna be like, Juggler? What juggler? That was like a hot knife through butter. Da -da -da. <laughs> well, after you land a critical hit in battle, enemies' passive skills are disabled. This happens after battle. This is not as good as something like Brenda and Elwyn's Frontal Assault. So you don't rely on that at all. You're not going to get this most time because you're just going to be one-shotting people. And last, not, and last but not least, his other original skill, Chain Lightning. Attack a single enemy dealing 1.4 damage. Crit increases by 20%. If this skill kills an enemy, its cooldown is reduced by 4. So it's got a lot of similar things to Fearless Strike, except it's slightly weaker. But it deals fixed damage before the unit attacks. Fixed damage is equal to his attack. One times his hit attack. And then if you deal a critical hit after battle, it deals another instance of fixed damage. With the amount of jugglers that will probably be running blood pact in order to counter sp elwin and his sword soul this is going to leave them open to chain lightning going in popping the last rights and then he can just mow them down one of the things that you're i'm going to show you in some videos i'm going to play with lanford in here with sp elwin sp elwin is going to be there as the bait that juggler is going to put on He's going to have to choose, who do I want to protect against? So I want to go Lobster or Behemoths or just a bunch of extra damage, but risk the U Unicorns from SP Elwin one-shotting him, or put Stone Colossus and then risk Land for one-shotting. Most jugglers are going to go Stone Colossus because SP Elwin is who they're going to think is the bigger threat. You surprise them with Land for you with Berserkers, and you run over... Those stone colossus, like this is that's one of the times you're gonna want chain lightning because pop, pop your last rights. You might not even need to crit if you have attack blessing on there to just run that juggler over. Lanford might die afterwards. There I had a Apex match one time. This Angelina came, used her three C, pushed him back, and then went to attack him because he was, you know, <laughs> my most powerful unit that I had on there. My Lanford crit her and was untouched and one-shot her. He, his animation is for critting is one of the fastest in the game from what I can see. Because literally she's coming in, she's like, you know, you know, two in-game inches away from hitting him. And boom, crit. Destroys her. She's gone. And after that I just slow pushed and won the game. The amount of power this that Lanford has, he's going to start shining in the, this coming season and the next afterwards. As long as single targets are going to be the new meta, you're going to have to fear him because he will run over your Lancer tanks. Chain Lightning is very great for that. It's also, if you run into a Yulio, which is going to become more popular, you you don't even need to have Berserkers. You could just have Sealing Warriors, but you do that. A lot of Yulias don't run the SR ring, the meditation ring, to stop fixed damage. Pop them, they get low health. You're you're going to one-shot her because she's squishy. Once she's going to revive, then if you crit her in that battle, immediately after she revives, the second crit will go out before she heals. When I played him for a short time, and I fought against a few Yulias, that happened every time. Literally won me the match because that was one of the only outs I had because they had other ways to get her get her healed up. 
do not overlook chain lightning do not overlook going the chivalry javelin chain lightning route or chivalry roar chain lightning in the rare instances you use roar because if a fearless strike they'll crit they'll fix damage before battle this would just be unbelievable but can't have everything but that's it for the skills so there are going to be times you're you know you're facing that juggler if you can bait him into using stone colossus you really think he's gonna do it you want you want to take that chain lightning to pop those last rights because when you melt him it's sp owen just clean up everything afterwards all right we're gonna now go into the soldiers the main soldier you're going to be using on him for the most part is going to be steel wing warrior when attacking soldier attack increases by 30 percent when ranged attack gain plus 30 percent defense and match defense they have a small chance of surviving his defense boost is not the great so you really don't want to run into magic users that's the bane of his existence but these units are very flexible high damage good animation don't have a weakness to anything but archers if you and because you're gonna be using his 3c most times that'll make him immune to stat reductions at all time now before now because we have stealing warriors you're pr not gonna really use griffin knight because stealing warriors have more hp and you don't care that they have slightly more magic defense because it's so negligible they don't get an increase when attacked by a ranged attack so that's not going to help you like, the 30% here would literally give him more than what Griffin Knights have after everything. He would go, e like, 30% right there. Just going by 300, that's an additional 90 points. That's going to just bring him up to 449 right there. Like, at a minimum, if not more. So, Griffin Knights are on the back seat. If you are debating Bill Stealing Warriors, they're going to serve you a lot better. Heaven's Guard. In a very rare instances, especially if a lot of infantry units are coming around, like we're going to see Wataru and the old guy whose name I can't remember is going to be with him. If you're on a, a stage that doesn't have a lot of terrain on there, you can put them on there and using chivalry, you can really deal the damage and you can take that class advantage over them. So. It's going to be rare when you want Heaven's Guard, but there are a few instances with more infantry units being played where she will ha have a time to shine. Guardian Cavalry is trash, don't use it. Berserkers, I love these units. This is going to be your bread and butter against most Lancer enemies. Like, you start running into a ton of Lancers on there. You're, like, they aren't playing Jugglers, they're playing Albedos, they're playing Leadens, they're playing that Lancer Landius. These are going to be your bread and butter to get around everything. Increase 30% increased crit chance. Attack increased by 15%. Just going to combo so well with Lamford. Bust through everything. Even if Ledin, you're placing off against a Ledin or a Battle, they deal increased damage. Get that attack blessing. Get that Ledrade and the Iris. With the class advantage, you're just going to wipe through their Phalanx. And you're just going to go on and you're just going to kill them. There are so many times I was able to just chain lightning or feelish strike a leaden. Well, no, oh, well, it's fear is fearless strike came out later. No, I actually had to roar a leaden. It was one of the few times before he had his 3C, I had to roar in order to get some of his divine guard buffs off before Righteous Duel came out. There's going to be a few instances because like, if you go up against a leaden, if they don't take Righteous Duel, they just take a divine guard because they want to go pure tank and they just want and all they want to do is just defend their units and counter the single targets your fearless strike is going to wipe him out so lanford really is going to have a place in this meta you're going you are going to see some people start playing lanford and they are going to start wiping out those single target tanks because He's just going to crit right through them. He's going to get that attack blessing buff. He's going to get that Imelda buff. He's going to get that Wyler buff. And they go, hey, how is he just killing us? Hey, I crit you for over 9,000. 
Guardian Infantry is bad for him because they don't deal extra damage to their defensive unit. Amazon Champion. If you want to play the mind games, you're like if you're going up and you know it's going to be a Lancer Landius and you know he's going to make a Soldier's Royal Cavalry, you can put Amazon Champion here. Lower his defense possibly when attacking and gain increased attack. They will counter those Royal Cavalry. And while they kill the Royal Cavalry, Lanfer can then just attack Landius, popping him. So you can very easily take a life off and take little to no damage. Like your Amazon champions will absorb most of it, and your chivalry will heal you afterwards. But you need but you need to know that he's gonna play those, because if he goes something like Guardian Infantry instead. <laughs> You're going to start seeing some mind games later if people start playing Lanford. Probably in some of my matches when you see me, you're going to see they're going to play Guardian Infantry. So they're just like, oh, he's going to play Amazon Champion to counter my Royal Cavalry, so I'll counter Amazon with my Guardian Infantry. But, hey, those will remain to be seen. Any other units after this, they're all the lower level ones. Vanguard Lancer is the worst Lancer ever. He should never have been made. But... Summation, majority of the time you're going to be using Steelwing Warrior. That way you don't have have to worry too much about cavalry units. They can help you bridge that gap and kill them. But if there aren't cavalry units, you're going to be using Berserker. Alright. On to equipment. Going to be pretty standard. Seal Guardian is going to be your bread and butter. It's going to be one of the things you're going to love. Just has high attack, high attack increase. It's going to give him what he needs. I need to enchant this up. Can't seem... I <laughs> keep going back and forth between... Like an 11 and 10% with high flat... And HP or just... Really bad ones. It's been a tough roll on this sword. Other options do include... Mimir's War Axe. It's not the most preferable for him because... There's less attack as a base, but you can get hero damage plus 20%, somebody else dies. And most times you're not going to use it though, but if you don't for some reason have a Seal Guardian, this is a great substitute. You can go the route of Demon Slayer for increased skill for increased crit chance. You don't even care about the spelling the buff afterwards because you just want to get all that chance to crit. Now another option which I might build and play Mjolnir. At max, you know, six star rank of this, you have a 100% chance of this spell one buff. So you can use that in combo with Fearless Strike and Roar, so you dispel three buffs. So you can very easily strip the correct buffs off a juggler, for example, get that water buff gone, and now his lobsters don't produce damage. Nope. While the attack is lower, it's the same as Mimir's War Axe at 85. Being able to just strip those buffs off can be helpful in the longer term. Balance Blade is not for him. He doesn't have any AoE moves. And Blood Dragon Slayer Gram. This is more defensive. It's you're not unless they release a lot more dragon units, you're not gonna see a need for this. Though it does have decent stats in general. Blood Sword for Runting. You don't you don't want to get into fixed damage right there because it only gives you a plus 5% attack increase. It doesn't give you enough attack. You want to stick with Mjolnir for that extra 10%. You want to, or Seal Guardian as a safe side. Probably before the end of the season, I'm going to try a couple matches with Mjolnir just to see how it works out. For his armor, I... 1000% recommend Aeolus Battle Armor. This specific Aeolus Battle Armor has saved my Lanford quite a few times. Like the very first time I played Lanford against a Zerida, because I didn't know what Zerida really did yet, I didn't realize that she could attack directly when I was still new to the game. She crit, but Aeolus triggered. It saved me. I lived at just over a thousand health, and because of that, I was able to heal him up and then kill her in response and then win the match. If it didn't trigger, she would have killed him for free and ran out of distance, and I would have lost. But other armors do include Arcane Battle Garb, 
That way you can make sure you deal extra fixed damage to finish somebody off. You can do Bloodline Magic Armor. That, you know, if you're worried about somebody melee attacking you and want to live through that, you can do that as well. I prefer this because this gives me the one in a million chance of living through a ranged physical attack. You can do Giant's Resolve as well, giving you a bunch of extra defense and being have a less chance of being critically hit. That can always help you, but majority of the time I'm going to re recommend Aeolus or Arcane Battle Guard. Don't use Ancient Plate Armor, it's not worth anything. Mirror Armor is not for you. And that's about it. Oh, Anias' Armor, you don't want that. That's only kind of good on Elwyn, but these other armors are better on Elwyn. Next. <laughs> Lanford's Second Election. That's his personal helm. Defense plus 10% and Hero Talent Span plus 1. So instead of 2 blocks, it is 3 blocks. This will significantly help you. That way you can spread your team out just slightly more and they can still get those buffs and protect you. I've had people attack my Landius with my Lanford nearby. The extra 15%. Oof, they could barely punch through him. They did not realize how tanky he was. But I got this way before Fury of Tear. If you want, Fury of Tear can be great too. Again, just do that. Your Chivalry gives you plus 10% extra skill damage, and then you can Chain Lightning or Fearless Strike with your 3C. Always going to be an option. Right now, I prefer this. I got this ama pretty amazing buff with 50% HP. Don't Kind of don't want to reroll it because of how high that is. That gives them more survivability. But other options include Vampire Mask. If your Chivalry near them, you have a chance of decreasing their defense by 20%. That's always an option. Anias Helmet, standard, gives good tanky stats if you don't have any of the other higher ones. You could do Chief's Helmet with him because he, that way you can buff up everybody else if you have nothing else. But in general, you want to either you want to stick with Fury of Tear or his personal helm. He's, which, if I can get another Fury of Tear, I might build that up and try that out just to see how it works with them. For the, right now you're going to see I have a Slayer's Emblem on him. That's because I've been using him for PvP so much. I'm probably going to take that off and put this Apex Boot on him. You may have to re-enchant it, but you need to have mobility on him. So it's just going to be pretty standard with any infantry units. Get that mobility. Yeah, I'll put him to four mobility at the start, just like Elwyn and Brenda will have. That way you can, you know, Queen's Whip him, Akka, Wild Power him, get him to six movement, move in, Chivalry, nine movement. That is going to be super key to keeping him in the action and getting to the enemy. If you don't have Apex Boot, again, Slayer's Emblem, Judge Talisman, Lone Star Amulet. All great other options if you have nothing else. Wing Shin Guard, as you get this for free. And then it gives them slightly more survivability when attacked. Um, where is it? Elven Ring, if you have none of the other ones. That way you get attack and defense when attacking for slightly more survivability when attacking. You don't need Overlord Badge. It doesn't give him enough attack. You don't have to worry because of his talent about reduced stats. You don't care about mobility reductions because you're just going to be able to ignore that. Insidious Pendant, while it does give increased crit, it doesn't give enough attack increase. I don't really recommend it that much. This is best on just the Assassins. Just focus on that. And... So, Summation. I want that Apex Boot. Get that Apex Boot. Put four movement on him at the start of the game. And they're going to realize <laughs> you're a serious land for player. Alright, so that's going to sum it up for equipment. You do need to get pretty decently high attack, which is why I'm going to try to re-enchant this Seal Guardian or that Mjolnir, see if I can get high attack for attack percentage. 
all the other stats he's going to get are going to come from his talent, like plus 15% once he goes into battle, chivalry, anybody else buffing him up. So, that, <clears throat> excuse me. So that is what's going to keep him in the game. That's what's going to keep him strong and tank busting. Now, heroes that work well with him. We're going to just real quick go over that. It's going to be a recurring theme. Tiaris, attack blessing, plus 30% increased damage on attacking, reduces damage taken by half. Miracle, plus 15% damage, damage dealt and reduced when being dealt damage. Always great. Iris with... Le Jardin de Iris, Teleport, does it suffer mo mobility penalties from terrain, plus 20% increased damage, and take 20% reduced damage. Always going to be helpful. Emelda, where did she go? She's up here. Queen's Whip, extra unique stat buff with mobility plus 2, and increased fixed damage as well. So... This is actually pretty good. An increased crit and crit damage. She is going to be a main theme in this single target. You're going to see me trying to play her as much as possible. This whip, whip that Lanford into shape and then send them off. Six movement plus chivalry with nine. Oof. Going to hit him like a hurricane. Wyler helps him too. High stakes, 15%. Increased damage, 15% reduced damage, as well as healing before battle whenever he's single targeted or attacking. Always great. Landius. Landius's resplendent legend. If Lanford is attacking and he, for some reason, doesn't have a class advantage, he'll deal 15% increased damage. This can help as well, especially if you go up against a juggler who takes lobster behemoths and you have him at the same time. Boom. You're just dealing 15% more damage for free. It might not bridge it enough to go over Stone Colossus, like, but you'll definitely be able to pop those Lobster Behemoths. Deedlet's going to help as well with Sea of Miracles, 15% increased damage, and whoop, Accelerated Aid to give him more mobility. Always great. And then Matthew, Sprint, Plus 20% attack in and plus one mobility. Just standard if you want to run him. Akka, wild power, plus 30% attack in it and three blocks. I mean, and plus two mobility. So she's going to be great too. Probably going to want to run her over more than Matthew. You can do Estelle because of Enduring Hope, plus one mobility. And she increases skill as well. So you can just give Lanford even more crit chance. Last but not least, we're just going to go over Luna real quick again. Well, where'd she go? Wind God Realm allows him to ignore two spaces for free movement. So you can turn, turn him into an 11 movement character. <laughs> it can get pretty insane. Imelda, Akka, Luna, and Lanford. You can just run in there, 11 movement, take out that tank, and not have a thing to worry about. Heroes that you're going to go up against, he surprisingly has a lot of advantages over the upcoming single target tanks. Ledin and Albedo are going to be using Phalanx most of the time. Now, for Ledin, he does not have any, ca any actual cavalry units to counter it like elite cavalry is garbage so <laughs> you can ignore that phalanx is weak against berserkers so you're just gonna be able to run them over crystal molder won't stop physical damage amazon champion's not defensive mass made doesn't have the defense needed like the only ones that you could possibly use are exorcists because they gain 22 percent increase i mean they gain i think it's a 30% increased defense when fighting against non-demons. But even then, even with his damage reduction, if you're critting and dispelling his Divine Guard buff or any other buffs which give him defense, you're just going to run him right over. You do have to be careful about that counterattack. You need to have some type of buff to take reduced damage. 
going to Albedo. Albedo does have the ability. She, I hate this. She does have Guardian Infantry, so she can have defense on there. Just a ton of increased defense. Guardian Cavalry, you can ignore. This is never going to work for her because it can't, this goes against just everything you'd want from it. Hellhound's not defensive. She has Stone Colossus, Phalanx, and Crystal Molder. You're going to be able to run her over most of the time because they're not going to play Guardian Infantry against you. They're going to... They might have to because they don't want to be completely countered with the Phalanx, but you want... You're going to want to play against her because you get that attack blessing buff. Even though she takes 25% reduced damage at max rank and she deals a bunch of increased damage, you're just going to run her over. You have faster attack animation, faster reach. You're going to get to her. You're going to kill her. Landius is the toss-up. Because you have to play the mind games as I was discussing earlier. Like, a lot of them are going to be Lancer, but some of them are still going to be Royal Cavalry because they want that extra movement, and they don't want to have to deal with any other infantries. But a lot of people are going to be like, hey, SPL one's coming out, I need to counter him. They're going to go Lancer, and again, you get SPL one and Lanford on the same team, they know you're going to go Unicorn. Because Unicorn will counter Royal Cavalry so that they can't resist that damage. If you have both of them, if they go Royal Cavalry, you're like they're going to have a bit of a counter, but you can guess. What they're going to do is you have SPL when you have Lanford. They're going to go Trent Guards or Heavy Centurion. You can take Berserkers, run them over, dispel those buffs, tell him, hey, <laughs> you're nothing, and then just finish him off. If he decides to go like Templar Knight or something, like to stop the... You know, have re increased resistance to magic defense. Then you can just go Amazon Champion. Like, if you think he's going to go Royal Cavalry. Go Amazon Champion. If you have another unit like Toguro. And he... he, he you, you know he's going to take Royal Cavalry. Take Amazon Champion. You'll be able to counter him. But you just, you just have to take... Take the gamble that he's not going to be Royal Cavalry as his main class. That said, you don't want to go up against other supports like Wyler or Tiaris in general because they are going to buff, they are going to give resistance. If you don't dispel the right buffs, they might live with an inkling of life and then heal. Don't want to deal with them, ban them out. You do not want to go up against Hiei or Zerida. They will strike you directly, and you are not the tankiest person. They can very easily just one-shot you at that point if your Aeolus doesn't trigger. They can then hit you with, like, Hellfire Archers afterwards and then just finish you off with that fixed damage, or Shinobis. Omega, mm, he's never going to triple you. There's no chance of him tripling you, even if he moves and uses uses his... what's it called? Where is it? Even if he uses Knowing Strike, he's never going to triple you because you're building him with skill. And you're going to have enough stats. Like, he might barely manage to double you, but in most cases, he won't even be able to do that. So you don't have to worry about Omega. <laughs> Just really not at all. You do want to worry about Licorice because... Licorice does have her main ability. She uses Dark Despair. She uses Dark Dragon Breath. You don't want to go over those tiles and take damage before attacking. Get rid of her. Cavalry units in general. Helena. Leon. Cavalry Landius. Probably not going to see too much. Mystery Knight. Or Knight of Mystery. Whatever you want to call her. You don't want to deal with those. Those are going to have advantage over him most times. And will outrange him slightly. Keep them away. Sage of the Trees will have no effect on him unless you use Steel Wing Warriors. Like, if you take in Berserkers against him, he just has nothing. You can just ignore him, Chivalry up, as long as you don't have Iris Teleport on Lanford, you won't have a thing to worry about. 
last but not least, ban any mage units. You don't want to deal with Bozos or other Deedlets coming to attack him. Deedlet will just kill him. With unicorns and dealing magic damage, he'll just melt. Make sure you're not in range of a Yulia. You counter her with your fixed damage from your chain lightning. But make sure she can't get that first attack off and that she doesn't get godly menace out. Don't let them get Rachel, Bozel, Licorice, any mage unit in general. Alright, that's going to cover it for Lanford. He's going to have a lot of flexibility and he's going to have a big role. You're going to start seeing people start playing him when they realize he counters all the Lancers that you're going to be seeing. Alright, with that said, I do hope you enjoyed the guide. I'm going to show you him in some Apex matches once the season starts. If you like the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Check out some of the other videos you're going to see. Righteous Freed out.